Fear stops us from achieving our true greatness. Are you a professional woman who is feeling stuck, unmotivated, or burned out? Are you worried about your wellness? Are you letting fear stop you from crushing your goals? If you answered yes to any or all of these, then this is the podcast for you. Dr. Charmaine Gregory, Night Shift Emergency Physician, Burnout Thriver, and Wellness Champion, along with everyday heroes just like you, will explore how to face fear in our lives and emerge victoriously. Hello, Fearless Freedom family. Dr. G back again. Oh my goodness. I am so excited for the guest that we have on today. Let me just tell you about the amazing Erica Blocker. Okay. Erica is the bomb for many reasons, but I had the opportunity of meeting her in person at the She Podcast Live conference. And we were on a panel together talking about what? Guess what? Fear. Oh my and it was just a phenomenal experience. You know, we got to vibe. And even though we hadn't met each other in person and that was the first time, I just felt like she was my people. You know what I mean? You never feel that way? Like the person that you're talking to is just your tribe, your person. And that's how I feel about Erica. And I want to share her with you all because she is just that phenomenal. So Erica, you want to tell the Fearless Freedom Tribe about you and what you are currently up to, because I know you're up to a lot of great stuff. Well, thank you so much, Dr. G. You are so awesome, too. And the feelings you have for me are mutual. I feel the same way about you. So grateful that we had an opportunity to share that stage together and to have that great conversation and the friendship that we've also built after as a result of that experience. So thank you for having me on the show. And I am excited to be here. So let me say, what about me? I'm one of those women who are always, who's always doing something, right? Just people are always like, well, what are you up to now, Erica? And I'm like, oh, you know me, I have always, I always have something cooking on the, on the stove or whatever, you know? So like right now I am working on multiple projects, but my big vision is really just getting my, my ducks in a row for 2020. That's what I'm really focused on right now. So I'm wrapping up some projects. I did a lot of speaking engagements in the third, second, well, actually third and fourth quarters of this year. So I have my last one coming up soon in a couple of days. And then it's just going to be really me hyper-focusing on my, the thing, the projects I want to bring into 2020 and what I want to accomplish in 2020. So some of those things that I'm currently working on include my first solo book. I have some. (laughs) I'm so excited about that. Oh my gosh. (laughs) <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I have written some collaborative projects before I've co-authored some books and created a project where I had some co-authors in a, in a book. And I did that back in 2015 and a couple of other projects, but this is my first solo book. So I'm really excited about it. So exciting. So exciting. Thank you. I'm so excited. And so that's been in the forefront kind of now in the background and bringing it back to the forefront. I'm also working on some new programs that I'll be that I will be introducing in 2020 and also an online event that I am launching in early 2020. So those are the big things. And then also, you know, of course my podcast will continue and other things like that, but those are the main things that I'm focusing on right now. Awesome. And so do you want to tell the audience a little bit more about what the book is going to be about? I think they probably are intrigued Because it sounds like they hear that you have had some collaborations and now you are branching out and you're doing a solo project. And so a little bit of backstory on the project and um, what the book is going to be bringing to the table. Sure. I'd love to share. Thank you. So the books, the book that I did back in 2015 is, or actually 2014, excuse me, is called Motherhood Dreams and Success. You can have it all. And that was a collaboration where I found 29 women from across the world who wrote a story, or wrote a chapter about how they are mothers fulfilling their dreams, some of the challenges they face, some of the triumphs they've had, some of the you know not so great times and the good times, all a combination of inspirational stories and really put together to inspire other moms to follow their dreams. The book that I'm working on now is for, it's to help 
women who went through divorce heal and to put their lives back together again after the devastation of not ever believing or thinking that they'd get divorced and finding themselves in that position. And then what's next? Like, what do you do after that? And you have children and you have responsibilities. How do you put your life back together when you're trying to heal emotionally and make sense out of your life? So that's what the book is about. It's my, it's based on my personal experience. And that's because I went through a really bad divorce a few years ago, unexpectedly, and kind of just, you know, basically had to put my life back together again. And starting from scratch and rebuilding my finances and figuring out where we're going to live and all these things. So I wanted to, I feel like that is my gateway project. I have a few other book projects in mind. There are solo books that I intend to write, but for some reason I just can't get, I can't write those books until I write this one. So no, yeah, you basically, your truth is calling. So yes, get out there. Wow, that sounds like a book that can be very useful. And it's interesting that you're writing this book because I literally was in a mom's group the other day and there was a question posed about, well, what do I do now that I'm getting divorced? So clearly there is a audience for your book. And so super excited to hear when that's going to be launched and to see it out. And when it comes out, you know, I'm going to be promoting it because that is well needed. So awesome. Thank you for putting your truth out there because I know that that is not something that's easy to do. Um, But, you know, by speaking your truth, you're going to help so many other women who are potentially going through it and thinking that they're alone and not knowing which way to go. And I mean, you brought up something very important, which is, you know, the one of the biggest things I feel that I hear a lot. I mean, I haven't had that firsthand experience, but I hear people say, you know, oh, you know, now I'm, now I'm divorced. Like, what am I going to do as far as, you know, the house and the, the, the finances and paying the bills and, you know, used to getting two incomes into the home to support the family. And now it's just one. And, you know, if you're lucky enough to be the person that is, was making more, you're in a little bit better situation. But if you are unlucky enough to either have a spouse who was a spendthrift or wasn't really, diligent with the finances or you didn't have a, uh, you know, you didn't have some a reserve set up, it can be very devastating and you can feel very hopeless and not know where to turn. So thank you so much for doing that because I definitely think it's well needed. Lots of people are facing that and are looking for options. And so providing that it's going to be great. Thank you. And you know, most of all, I mean, yes, there was a lot of reconstructing of my life and all that stuff and healing emotionally. But the the one thing that I remember most was so much fear. I was I was overwhelmed by like the fear of not being able to be a good mom, the fear of messing my kids up from this divorce, the fear of not being able to support us financially, just like you said, being accustomed to having two incomes. And at the time, I was only working part time because my children were smaller. And I was like, my husband was the breadwinner and my, my income was just like the, you know, the side income or whatever. It wasn't, it was definitely wasn't paying the bills. So that was a, a bitter, a bit of a shock, you know, to figure out, oh my gosh, how am I going to pay this mortgage now? The car note, all these things. And I was just overcome by fear and the fear of just like, I don't want to be a single mom. Like, how am I going to do all this stuff by myself with four kids? Like, not one, not two, not three, but four. And it was, it was very scary. It was a very scary time in my life. A lot of uncertainty, a lot of doubt, a lot of crying and just resentment, all, all types of things. But most of all, I just remember being afraid, even like to the point, Charmaine, of being afraid to sleep in the house at night because I was so used to him being there. Oh yeah. I can relate to that. I mean, I, I feel like that's real. I mean, it's just, Yeah. No, that's so real. That's so real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so what it, What was it that you, um, what did you tap into? Like, how did you, I mean, obviously you are thriving, obviously, right? Now you have been able to not only thrive in your own life, but you've been able to help others to thrive as well. So you went from a space where you kind of felt like, oh my goodness, what's next? you know, I don't even really want to be in this house by myself because, you know, I'm so used to a different structure. 
I, I don't know how I'm going to pay the bills, make ends meet. I don't know how I'm going to be the solo parent for my, you know, my awesome children, you know? So it's just like, what got you from that fearful place to where you are now? Like, how did you do that? Well, I know for sure it was God and my faith and the belief that eventually I stopped having a pity party for myself. And I, I really, actually, there was a pivotal moment that I remember like it was yesterday. I was doing one of my normal Saturday mornings, laying in bed crying and kind of like wallowing in my own sadness and trying to figure out why me, God, what did I do to deserve this? I thought I was a good person. I've never done anything to hurt anyone. Why am I being punished? This whole conversation that I was having between myself and God. And I remember in that moment, I was just so desperate to feel normal. I, st- I, I didn't want to be sad anymore. I wanted to be happy. I could hear my kids in the other room playing. And I was just like, I want to get up out of my bed and go in their rooms and play with them and have fun and really be present. But I just, I just wasn't in that, that mindset at all. So I remember saying, I remember closing my eyes and saying a prayer to God and asking him if he would just get me out of this dark place, I promise that I would use my story. I would share my experiences so that I, so so that I could help other women who were suffering in silence like I was. Wow. Yeah. And I won't say that the heavens opened up and the angels started singing in that moment, but I will say that after that, I felt different. Like it wasn't immediately, but I could tell each day I started to feel a little bit stronger, a little less, a little less sad, a little less fearful. And he started to show me that everything that he had, that I had gone through wasn't punishment. It wasn't about me. It was for the women who he knew that I could help because, you know, everyone who goes through a divorce or goes through something personal, isn't able to share, isn't able to stand on a stage and tell their story in a way that can save someone's life or change someone's life. And I, and I guess God knew that if he gave that to me, that I would use it in the way that would be, you know, to his glory. So that's kind of where I got my strength and I realized that it wasn't about me. And then if I didn't stand up and speak and if I didn't get myself together, A, how could I take care of my children? And I didn't want them to suffer. Right. And, you know, I just, I just didn't want to be in that place. I wanted to be, I wanted to be better. So, you know, wanting, having the desire to try to find my happiness and rediscover who I was, was really at also at, you know, at the root of it all as well. Wow. That is really powerful. Thank you so much for sharing that, Erica, because, um, yeah, I, I could totally see the crying in the bed and not wanting to move and get out because, uh, yeah, I think that would definitely be me. That would for Mm -hmm. sure be me. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just amazing that you, were able to tap into your faith and just have that inner strength and be able to release the power within you in order to be able to pay forward in such an amazing way. I mean, you're getting on stages and you're talking to women about this powerful story and giving them hope. And you're getting on the air and you're talking on your podcast about this and you're just really inspiring so many people. It's absolutely incredible. Do you want to talk a little bit about how the podcast plays a role in all this? Like, did, was it that you, you know, you basically started, you know, getting more and more strength over the time initially from drawing on that, that desire to want to be there for your children, to want to be stronger and then, or, and then did it kind of develop into a, a point where you just said, you know what, I need to get my voice out more. And then you started a podcast or how did that part of it come in? Like the fear that you overcame, like, how did you get from, you know, being in that uh, room on a Saturday crying and longing to be able to play with your children to being a thought leader, to being on stages, to having a podcast, like, how did that evolve? Wow, that's such a great question. And I'm so glad you asked that because it's rare that I go back and think about the whole process. But as you were asking, I was, I was reflecting. And I remember that, so after my book came out, Motherhood Dreams and Success, You Can Have It All. Actually, in the process of writing that book, I had several conversations with the co-authors. And remember, there were 30 of us. So there were 29 other women 
who I was in constant contact with daily, talking about their stories, encouraging them. Some of them had never written or shared their stories. So like it was a big deal for them to put it on paper and put it out for the world. So I was kind of coaching them through it. And then, and then I also became a life coach myself and I started a group for moms and that was called moms with dreams. And after that, like just talking to different women, I realized that, you know what, it's, there's, there, there's this universal thing. Like we, as women, we are often, we are often kind of like, I don't know, I don't want to say we're born this way or we're, I don't know if it's environment, it's, I guess it's a combination of nurture nature thing, but Mm -hmm. as women, we tend to put our own desires and dreams on the back burner when we have children, we feel like, you know, it's, it's our duty and right to put our children first and whatever we wanted or whatever we longed for isn't nearly as important as making sure that our children have everything they need and want and everything else possible for them, right? So I realized that it was like almost like an epidemic where there were so many women who felt like they had lost their purpose, they lost their sense of identity, they didn't know what they wanted anymore. And so that's kind of where moms with dreams came from because I started to realize that it wasn't just me. I wasn't the only one who felt like this. And it wasn't just the result of a divorce either. It was being a mother, being a wife, being a woman, being a, you know, a a professional with a career and all these responsibilities that we have as women. So I was like, oh, well, let me start a radio show. So I started an online radio show through Bold Radio Station the year before I started my podcast, which was, I guess, was in 2000. 13, I started the radio show and um, did that for a year. And then I was like, oh, I kind of, I don't know if I like this, this format where I have to be live and it's all this pressure from the producer and all these, you know, the station and all this stuff. So I was like, let me, I did that for a year. And then I was like, you know what? I think I want to do a podcast because with that, I have creative control. I have control over my schedule. I can schedule my interviews and work around my own lifestyle where versus, you know, being live on the radio, I have to be there a certain time. So that's where the podcast came in. It was a result, a direct result of conversations that I had with other women and realizing that there wasn't, there was a thing. It was a thing, you know, mom guilt is a thing. Oh yeah. Uh, The whole, you know, the, all the things that we experience as, as moms. And I was like, well, there's so many women who have big dreams and big goals who've lost sight of those things. And so I wanted to share and highlight and encourage other women, but I also created my podcast to create a platform for women to be able to stand up and say, this is what I'm doing, or this is what I've accomplished. This is what I believe in. So it was, it was a kind of like a multifaceted purpose behind the podcast. Awesome. And then how did you end up transitioning to getting on stages? So that's something funny. I mean, like, so this whole thing about me speaking and being a podcaster and and a coach and all this stuff is so funny to me. Why is that? (laughs) (laughs) Because I am such an introvert. I am not the person who likes to be, I don't like all the attention. I don't want, I don't like to talk, which people don't even believe me when I say this, but I'm really like someone who likes to be in the background. So it's funny that I have all these things. And the speaking just came again from me realizing that if I didn't speak up, if I didn't show up, that, you know, who would, who would help those women who felt all alone like I used to feel? Because when, when I was struggling through my divorce and my identity crisis and all of those things, I didn't have anyone who could relate to who, what I was going through. Like no one in my circle, my family had ever been divorced. So it was like, I was like, you know, the, not a black sheep, but I definitely stood out among my friends and everything. So I didn't really have the support that I wanted. So I wanted to, I knew that if I didn't speak up and share and get out of my own way and let the fear of speaking go, then I would be doing everyone a disservice. And I I knew that that wasn't what God had intended for my life. So I had to get out of my own way and get out of my fear and just do it. Oh man. Wow. That's the, I mean, that's just so powerful, you know? So your why it was pretty strong, you know? Yeah. I think that that makes a huge difference in how, um, how you show up and how you propel yourself. Because I mean, if, especially as an introvert, because I mean, getting on a stage as an introvert is not, uh, it's not an easy feat. Mm-mm. You know, yeah. it's, it, the podcasting is a little different because you know, you're, you know, you're in a room or you're in wherever you podcast, you know, and you're maybe interfacing with another individual or maybe a couple of individuals, but it's uh, usually a virtual interface. So it's not, 
the same as, you know, getting under the bright lights in front of a, you know, a crowd of hundreds and sharing, you know, that's a, that's another level of, uh, you know, expression. So, you know, so that, that's amazing. Now, do you feel, I've talked to other introverts and, you know, they all say that it takes a lot out of them to do these things. Do you have that, do you have that same experience and feel like there's a recovery period or, or you haven't noticed that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just laughing because I'm thinking about the She Podcast this weekend and I was just like, oh, I need a break. It was uh-huh. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like simulation overload. It's like, whoa, this is like all these great things happening at once. It's like, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to right, go. <laughs> right. And I'm just tired. I need to break. I need to go like sit by myself. So yes. There is definitely <laughs> definitely a recovery period for me. Not so much when I'm speaking. Well, it depends on what I'm doing. Like if I'm leading a workshop or if I'm doing a, an event where I'm hosting all day, then yes, I need to recover. But I can just go up and speak and I'm fine. But at, it's it's like afterwards, you know, when you have to talk with people and oh, yes. you're meeting and greeting and doing all this stuff. To me, that's where I'm burning the energy because it's like, this is a lot for me right now. I can do it. Like, I love people and I love helping and, and talking with people, but it, it's not, it's work. So yeah, yes. I do have to recover afterwards. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no. And it's just funny because like, I, um, I guess I'm kind of like a mix uh, of both sides of things. I guess I, I suppose that Enneagram would probably be more accurate than the saying extrovert, introvert, but the, um, <laughs> you know, it's like, for me, it's, it's all it's a heavily extroverted side, but there are definitely times when I'm in a situation and perhaps it's a room full of people that I just don't know anyone. And, uh, the introvert side does come in and you just want to just not talk to anybody, but mm-hmm. then you have to force yourself to do that. Yeah. You have to force yourself to go talk. Uh, but that does take energy. It really does. And so I could totally see why you would want to take a little hiatus after something as high energy as she podcast was and just high, you know, I mean, it was, it was so awesome. It was just like, it was almost like you went to Disney world or something, or you were Mm -hmm. like in a candy shop and you love candy. You know what I mean? Or, you know, it it is just like, okay, my gosh, just like this kind of candy over here and this over there. And, you know, I just don't know what to go to first. I feel like if I go to one, I'm going to miss out on the other, you know? So it was all of that. And the energy was just so high. It was just, it was phenomenal. It was a phenomenal conference. Um, but yeah, I could totally see why afterwards you'd be like, okay, I need a vacation from my conference. (laughs) (laughs) Just to recoup, recoup, regroup. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like you too. I think that I'm, I tend to be more of an extroverted introvert, but still, even, even then it's, it's like, yeah, I need to, I need to settle down and take some time because that's when I can recharge too. Like some people, you know, true extroverts get recharged when they're around other people. I, on the other hand, I just, you know, that's not my recharging zone at all, but I love it. I love being, I love the energy that people, well, sometimes depends on the energy, but (laughs) I really don't want the negative. Right. (laughs) Cause then I pick that up cause I'm an empath too. So I pick up whatever energy is around me and then it's like, oh man, I got to get rid of this. So yeah, it's like, it's a lot, but I don't know. I just realized that if I didn't get out of my own way, that I was, I just, I wasn't going to be able to walk in my purpose. Wow. That takes a lot of insight. You know, it takes a lot of um, self-reflection, knowing yourself. It's that, that's a, that takes a lot. So yeah, no, thank you for doing that. And I know that the women that you impact their lives, you know, they're grateful that you are stepping outside of your comfort zone to make sure that they have a voice and that they have a shoulder to lean on. Because, um, yeah, it's a lonely road when you feel like you're the only one, you know, Mm -hmm. and nobody around you, like you mentioned, there was nobody in your immediate sphere that was experiencing what you're experiencing. And so um, it just makes it that much more of a lonely road. So, no, absolutely. Thank you for doing that. It's huge. Really, really huge. Thank you. So I wanted to kind of switch gears a little bit because I know that a lot of times you talk with um, entrepreneurs on your show, right? Mm -hmm. Tell everybody what the podcast name is. 
Moms with Dreams show. Woohoo! Awesome. 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 <laughs> Gotta have the plug in there, right? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll have it in show notes as well. And so, um, you know, the, the thing with um, entrepreneurs is that, you know, we're a lot of us, you know, we are doing something brand new. We are, you know, we're working from not necessarily a brick and mortar type of uh, place. You know, we're doing a lot of our work online, thankfully, because of the internet. It's an amazing thing for a business. And, um, you know, there are some giants in this field of marketing this type of business. And you got to chat with one such giant. You got to tell that story. <laughs> How did you overcome fear and talk to like one of the most amazing giants in the field of online business uh, and is just a phenomenal person. So you want to tell the story about how that happened? Sure. I'd love to. So if you're on the edge of your chair wondering who Dr. G is referring to, she's talking about the one and only Amy Porterfield, who has the seven-figure business, I believe now. She might be closer to eight-figure business. And her podcast is called Online Marketing Made Easy. And it's for online entrepreneurs. She talks about all the, all the things that we need to learn as online business owners. And she's amazing at what she does. Super, super sweet. And so I was going to, it was 2017 and I was going to, or it might've been 16 now. I got to get my dates right when I tell the story, but it was a couple of years ago, I was headed to podcast movement out in Anaheim, California. And I was so excited because I am an online marketing made easy, Amy, Amy Porterfield junkie. I love what she does. And so I was like, oh my gosh, Amy's going to be there. I'm definitely going to her session, but even bigger than that, I'm going to ask her to be a guest on my show. So I know Amy's story. I know she's married and she has a stepson. And I was like, she, I don't know what she's going to say, but I'm going to ask her. So the whole time I'm like, not even really scared. I just decided that it didn't matter what she said, like whether she said yes or no, I was asking regardless because you can never get a yes if you never ask. Right. And, oh, that's so true. Mm -hmm. And the worst <laughs> they can say is no. So right. Like, <laughs> Right. So I was like, I'm going for it. So I went to her session. She did a panel discussion. She was awesome. And I stood in line. There were like a million people in this line to talk to Amy. It was the line was so long that she had to like move us into the hallway because the next session was starting. So she was like, guys, you know, out of respect, let's move outside. And she graciously talked to each and every one of us. And so when it was my turn, I was like, okay, what am I going to say? I have to sound like, I don't want to sound like I'm stalking or being crazy or anything like that, but I really do love this woman. So I went up to her and I was like, I'm such a big fan. I love your work and gave her her props. And then I was like, and also Amy, I would love for you to be a guest on the Moms with Dream show. And I talked about my podcast and she was like, sure. And I was like, what? Wow. And, like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> and then she was like, you know, she gave me the info to talk to her assistant and tell her that she said whatever. And then so all the everything like kind of fell into place. I did exactly what she said. I emailed her assistant, told her, told the assistant what Amy told me to tell her. And then we got the date set up. Amy came on the show. She was amazing. Oh, man. I, yeah. And so the conversation awesome. was, was amazing. And the whole time I'm praying, like, please, technology, do not mess up. You I'm know cracking. what I mean? That would be like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, disaster. <laughs> yeah, but it was great. I don't know the number of the episode, but if you just go to the Moms with Dream show and, and search Amy Porterfield, she'll pop up. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I've, I'm even meaning to listen to it myself. So I'm definitely going to go back and listen to it because I'm definitely curious. She does bring, she does bring it. I mean, she is, she's the bomb. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about it. So, and it, it is so cool to hear you tell the story because, you know, it, it just really goes to show that you can be successful. You can be killing it like she is and still be down to earth and still be about the people, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, she could have been easily like, oh, yeah, you know, I got to go and not, you know, not address everyone in that line outside, mm -hmm. of, outside of the venue. And then she could have also been like, no, no, I'm too busy and, said, you know, not even entertain being on the show. So mm -hmm. that is just so cool. And, you, you know, because you know how we see people and they're like, they have like a huge, um, 
a huge uh, following or they have like a huge presence Mm -hmm. on social media or online. And, you know, we just kind of, they almost get like celebrity status. Right. And so it's, you just never know what someone's going to be like when they have that kind of attention or they are that level of busy. Right. Because I'm sure her calendar is like booked, you know, Mm-hmm. I'm and then sure for it her is. to like just be so open to be like, oh yeah, sure, I'd love to be on the show. Just you know, just talk to my people. Have right. people talk to my people. My people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <That's> so cool. <laughs> I, and that you know, honestly, that made me love her even more. Not the fact that she said yes. I mean, not so much that, but just the fact that, like you said, she was the same Amy that I hear on her podcast. Like she didn't. I've, when I listen to her, I imagine that we're friends and that she's talking to me. But in person, she's the same exact person. Like she's, she doesn't change up. And the fact that she was so warm and um, warm and fuzzy, not like, you know, overly doing it, but she was right. really like genuine and everything that I imagined her to be. Now I've had experiences where I followed certain online influencers and thought leaders and met them in person and was disappointed, but that was not the case with Amy. She's super awesome. So you guys, if you're listening and you're like, I need some online marketing tips and I want to follow someone who's really down to earth and cool. I, I invite you to introduce yourself to Amy Porterfield. She's awesome. And Erica is not getting any kickbacks or affiliate. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> this is straight up like, this is what she feels. So yeah. I just want to make that clear. Yeah, no, I really believe in, I, I like her. No, she sounds awesome. So that is so encouraging. So encouraging. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And then, um, so we have some amazing things coming up next year. The book's coming out. We're going to hear about that. Um, as soon as it drops, we're going to be promoting the heck out of it. And then, um, you, um, have some other projects coming up. So you have the online program coming up. What is the online program going to be? So it's going to be for women. So I have a couple of programs. I have two programs that I'm working on now. One will be related to the book. So it's going to help women who are in the place where they're not really in the like sad, depressed mode anymore. They're kind of like ready for reinvention. Okay. So that's one program. And then another program that I'm doing, I haven't really narrowed it down yet, but it's also going to be for women. And I think it's going to be more so tailored to rediscovering your purpose, following your dreams, that kind of thing with structures. So like giving you strategic steps and things you can do to actually get to where you want to be. Awesome. Wow, that sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited about it. No, that's great. <laughs> yeah. And then so so the book sounds like maybe mid-2020. Yeah. So my goal is to have, I mean, I already, I have already locked down a location for my book release party, which is going to be in May. Okay. So the book will be out, I'd say spring, spring of 2020 right around okay. my birthday. Yeah. Awesome. That's a great birthday gift. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. my goal. April yeah, 2nd is good. my birthday. So I have to put, like, I'm putting it out there now. So it's going to be done by April 2nd. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You know what they say, but you put stuff out to the universe, you know, they end up happening. Yep. So there you have it. You have a date in mind and it's just going to happen. And then, so what about, so the courses are going to come out kind of concomitantly with the book, you think? So you're going to so, be releasing those at the same time or? Yeah, the course is going to be, well, the course, the, the divorce course might come out sooner because that's more so attached to the online event that I'm doing in March. Okay. So that'll be like, I'm doing a summit and it's going to be called life after divorce. So it's all okay. kind of, it's all related to the book leading up to the book launch. Right. And so the program will be like an extension of the book and kind of like feed off of each other. So yeah, the, that, that'll start. I would say you'll start seeing things from me like January, not January, uh, February, March. Okay. In that cool. area. Mm-hmm. Neat, 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 neat. Awesome. Awesome. This has been such a good conversation. Uh-huh. Thank I, you. I loved it. I know we like get to chat again after she, she podcasts. We're like, ah. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. All right. So we're at that point in the show where we do fill in the blank. Are you ready? I'm ready. ready? All Let's right. Do sweet. It. Sweet. Let's do this. All right. All right so, so the first one is if I am fearless, I will. Never stop. Never stop. Love it. 
And then the next one is, to me, fearless freedom means... Going after my dreams and not being afraid to conquer new things and step into un- unknown territory and do things that I've never done before. Beautiful. And then last but not least, my battle cry is... Reclaim your dream, do what you love, and make a difference. Woo! Mm-mm-mm. Erica, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be on the show, to share with the tribe, to bless the tribe, because I just know that there's so much more coming. Looking forward to the book, looking forward to the course, looking forward to all the awesome things that you're doing. And I know the tribe is definitely going to be keyed in to you and going to be following what you're up to as well. So thanks so much for, for being here with us. We really appreciate you. You're welcome. And thank you so much, Dr. G, for having me. Thank you to your listeners for listening and for being a part of your tribe. And thank you for the amazing work that you're doing because you're also doing amazing things to help us stand up, to walk in our purpose without fear and to just let fear know it doesn't have a place anymore in our lives. So thank you for the work that you're doing. I really appreciate you as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us today on this journey. Fear is all around us. It strives to stop us from achieving our greatness. We have the tools to be overcomers by sharing our stories, supporting each other, and doing self-reflection, we can do this. If you found value in this conversation today, please be sure to subscribe to and share this podcast with your friends. By going to your favorite podcast platform, leaving a review and a five-star rating, you will help to get the word out about it. And that is much appreciated. Thanks again for spending time with us. I appreciate your time and your attention. It is my hope that you will punch fear in the face today and that you will be strong, be brave, and unleash your greatness.